Welcome to Seller's Journey, the podcast where we speak to great sales reps and leaders and share their real stories from start to sales success. Hi, everybody. I'm Joseph Fung, and today I'm speaking with Christopher Cumby. He's a business development consultant and a sales and marketing strategist with the Commodities Group. Uh, you can learn more about Chris at ChristopherCumby.com. Chris, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Joseph, and uh, thank you to the audience for uh, tuning in. It'll be uh, it'll be a fun day. This this conversation is such a gem. I'm so anticipating it. Uh, we speak about people's journeys to sales success, and we don't often get to speak with people who have had the same success you have. Um, maybe you could start us off with just a couple of the the high level points on some of your success, because I know a few of our audience members won't have met you before. Right. Um, I, I, you know, if I was to roll back the clock, I got in, you know, sales really early in life and I was, uh, mm -hmm. fortunate enough to, you know, really identify that that's, um, you know, one of the gifts I had. So, you know, if you speed up to some of the successes, uh, that I you know, was able to, you know, accomplish and enjoy, you know, whether it was in the corporate world with Pepsi Cola, um, and, you know, really amplifying, uh, my ability to learn and change and adapt and, you know, grow, you know, to moving into the energy uh, sector or industry and then growing three successful companies in that uh, industry um, and then moving into, um, you know, really branding myself as a, you know, personal development coach and, and working with companies and corporations and helping them, you know, amplify their salespeople. Uh, I would say some of the highlights, you know, along that way uh, was probably the ability to, you know, manifest and, and, and really um, grab hold of, you know, what I wanted out of life and, you know, set goals and go after it. And, and I think from that, I was able to uh, guide myself to uh, accomplish some things. And, you know, some of the milestones uh, along that way were, you know, closing million dollar commissions, um, you know, hitting uh, almost 700 million in personal sales throughout my career, uh, you know, personally, and, you know, obviously for companies that I worked with or, you know, was building. So it was a lot of fun along the way. So, you know, I, I, I would say everybody needs to be uh, really good at uh, sales. And, and really what that means is be good at communication. And, and I think everybody will do really fine. Uh, thank you so much for the, the highlight reel because helping people see, you know, what, what you can accomplish and what can be done is such a key part of you know, the inspiration side of these interviews and these stories. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, my um, pleasure. My coach always said, if you can do it, so can I. So I like to share with people, um, not to impress them, but to impress upon them that when you set goals, you work hard, you take the action necessary, you, uh, you fail along the way and accept that, you, you are going to have those successes for sure. Absolutely. And to think about that, that kind of, you know, journey, the successes, the failures along the way. Why don't we roll that clock back, like you said, and, and kind of get to the, the beginning. Uh, where where did you grow up and where did you go to school? Well, I grew up in uh, Toronto, born and raised, uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, of course. And, um, you know, I, 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 I always say that I, I did more of the school of hard knocks than, mm -hmm. you know, the real, you know, college and university, even though I did and spent uh, time at York. Um, York University in Toronto. And, uh, you know, from there, I went right into sales at Pepsi Cola. And I think I learned that was that was really the guide, you know, along that journey um, for me mm -hmm. in, in, in school, for sure, is learning right, you know, in real life and, um, you know, just immersing myself uh, in things that I, you know, had no real clue I had to figure out along the way. And of course, you know, great guidance around me uh, during that time. Now, when we were chatting earlier, you, you spoke about how PepsiCo was your first real sales job, but you had a bit of a transition period before that. Uh, can you share a little bit about, about that journey and, and the entrepreneurial time? Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, I started way back as an entrepreneur. We can certainly dive into that, um, you know, after after I share, uh, you know, really what happened before Pepsi. Um, I joined a, 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 a company called Amway. Uh, which is a multi-level marketing company when I was 17 years old. Um, mm -hmm. I was still, you know, finishing up high school. Um, you know, by the time I finished high school, I was doing, you know, really well. I would do it part-time, then I moved full-time. So the 
I took a little bit of time off before really diving in. I went to a community college um, for a little bit and basically um, decided that uh, in, in Amway, I was doing so well that I was going to go, you know, sort of add it, uh, a more full-time basis. Um, and I was able to do that. And I bought my very first house, my own car. Um, and you know, then I found out I was going to have a baby. Um, and, uh, it kind of sidetracked some of my priorities if you want. Um, in it's life. funny how they do that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They can do that. Certainly. Um, but it, you know, it, 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 it taught me to persevere, of course, and, and continue to, you know, press forward. But, you know, for some strange reason, I was doing really, really well with Amway, but I, I, I almost had some insecurities with that. So I felt like I needed to get a job. Um, so I felt, you know, listen, I've got to, you know, increase my, my uh, knowledge. So I started taking courses um, around marketing, economics, business, accounting, um, and all of that. So when I was able to come out of school, I uh, I, I landed myself a, a great position in, in in Pepsi Cola. So that that was kind of the transition in between. So uh, I I want to ask, and I do want to come back to the entrepreneurial journey. But how how did you land that job at Pepsi? You know, what was the the story behind that? Uh, at right timing, uh, right place. Um, I wanted to work there. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I remember wanting that and I did, you know, whatever it took really to connect with the right people. I made a lot of phone calls. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people thought I worked there because they'd hear my name, you know, more than you know, maybe <laughs> anybody else, uh, because I called there so much and I just, I, I just pressed on it. And, and, um, I, I think because of that, I was able to uh, demonstrate that I wasn't afraid uh, to, uh, to, to take um, initiative and to, um, you know, really go after what it, what it was I wanted. So I, I think, you know, again, you know, the guy that brought me into the company, he recognized that, you know, he recognized my, uh, you know, wanting to be in Pepsi Cola because it was one of my, you know, um, you know, dream jobs at the, at the time that I really, really wanted to be part of. And, you know, so glad I did press because I really had an amazing uh, career there, uh, you know, fast tracked and, you know, did some really cool things. And uh, it was a ton of fun. But I, I would say it was mainly based on uh, my ability to be persistent. I love that message, the idea of persistence, but also demonstrating the desire to work with that company, because that's that's such a compelling thing on the other side as well. So I think, you know, both that persistence and that, that clear desire, uh, you know, pay dividends for you. For sure. Um, you spoke earlier about, uh, kind of a much earlier start to that entrepreneurial journey. Uh, maybe you could share that with our listeners. You know, what, what was that, that Genesis and that earlier experience? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, um, I, I think I got the bug early for, uh, you know, great motivator in life. And, you know, for me back in the day, you know, because I came from a pretty modest family, I mean, we had things we needed, but we didn't have more than, uh, you know, you know, much more than, you know, the things we maybe wanted. Um, and I decided that money was, was, was something that I wanted and it was a great motivator because I wanted to, you know, buy things on my own. And, you know, my dad always taught me to, you know, work for that. And, um, you know, so it became a really good motivator. So I was uh, seven years old. Um, I, um, I did a paper route, uh, because I remember, you know, uniquely taking notes, um, so that I would remember, you know, and I'd ask questions. I was always a kid that asked a lot of questions. My parents have probably drove them, you know, nuts, uh, because I asked about everything. And, you know, when I learned, uh, or I had the opportunity to get a paper route, which my dad, you know, he helped me and get it all set up. And, you know, I, I'd go around the neighborhood and, and bring, draw papers. I mean, you know, I'm going way back now when, you know, they used to do that. Um, but I used to get a commission plus a little bit of money, but it was mainly for tips. So mm-hmm. I knew that when I learned more about the person I was dropping the paper off at their house and I'd ask them questions about their dog or, you know, the vacation they went on or the car they just bought or, you know, 
different things that I, I knew if I can relate with them really early in life and ask them some good questions, you know, you become likable. And, and when you become likable, people trust you. When tr- people trust you, they're going to, you know, support you. And, you know, that support for me was based on, you know, getting a commission. So I knew um, that if I, and, and, and I kind of bumped into it because when I asked a lot of questions, I remember, you know, one of the gentlemen, I, I don't remember his name, but I remember him saying, you know, like you're really intuitive and, and you ask a lot of great questions. And I like that. And he gave me a really good tip. And I'm like, oh, if I do that with everybody, will everybody give me a really good tip? Will they like me? <laughs> and I did. I, I literally did that with everybody. And then I eventually saw a lot of money come from that. So speeding up a little bit after I did my paper route and I learned how to communicate, you know, really young, I uh, saw that, you know, and, and, I, and I truly believe this, solve a problem for people and you'll, you'll make money. Um, and back in the day, we had these pop bottles that were glass and they were returnable. Um, so returnable bottles got a, you know, a, a deposit that you'd put on, let's say, 25 cents for a large bottle and 10 cents for a small one. Um, and it kind of varied because it was all kinds of different sizes. And you'd have to pay for that deposit up front. So therefore, it was an incentive to go bring the bottle back and get your deposit back and so forth and so on. But I remember in my dad's, you know, in mom's garage, um, it would always be in the corner and they'd be, you know, really piling up. But I knew that that was money because I'd say to my dad, you know, uh, can we bring them back? Can we bring them back? And of course he was always busy. So then eventually I said, can I bring them back? And he goes, well, yeah, you could, but how are you going to get them there? And I had a little red wagon. It was a flyer wagon. And right. he actually built um, uh, um, a siding all the way around so I can stack them. And then I literally brought my dad's bottles back and then I collect the money and then he would pay me a commission from all the money that, you know, I was able to, um, you know, collect from that. And then I knew, well, if I could do it for my parents, then I can probably do it for everybody on the street. So I actually knocked a few doors, saw they had the same problem in their garage, dusty pop bottles And I suggested that I would bring them back. So that was my nine-year-old entrepreneur start. And I became really good at, uh, you know, finding little businesses after that um, all the way through my life. So you've had this remarkable journey of entrepreneurship, kind of sales, salesmanship throughout, you know, your your lifespan uh, so far. And uh, I know we're still kind of in the early innings of that journey, but if you reflect on your time as a a successful sales rep and leader, what has surprised you most about your time in sales? Oh, wow. What would surprise me most? I I would say that, um, uh, you know, building building, um, trust with people Uh, is often overlooked. I would say what surprised me the most is ask, uh, not enough people um, ask enough good questions. They jump into their pitch. They don't have any clue whatsoever if that's even remotely um, is something that people, you know, want to look at, want, will pay for, um, even have a problem with. And I see it constantly as I've been a trainer as well in sales. Um, you know, these are the types of things that you have to fact find. Um, and, I, you know, what surprised me the most definitely is I thought everybody was like me. Ooh, I honestly had no yeah. idea that people had difficulties um, because I just assumed that if I was doing it, then other people were doing it the same. Um, and I never really looked at myself as being, you know, necessarily different uh, from anybody. And, and you know, I, I think, you know, modestly and humbly about the things that I've done just because I just learned how to communicate really early in life and ask questions. And, and I think if people were to step back and ask better questions, I think they would increase their opportunity with, you know, anybody. So that's probably the biggest surprise. Um, is that I actually had no clue that people were having, you know, difficulties that they had in sales. Uh, I can, I can empathize with that and entirely the, the kind of recognition of 
everybody being on their own journey. Uh, you know, that's a, a large part of the reason why we founded this this podcast. You know, to help share those journeys and help people see themselves, yeah, you know, in other success. So, I can I can empathize with that a lot, Chris. Yeah, for sure. I I know we only have a little bit of time left, but do you have have room for just a couple of more questions? Of course I do. This is fun. Okay. Uh, so we'd love to kind of look forward a little bit, um, and then we'll jump into those rapid fire questions again. Uh, but you've accomplished a heck of a lot, a remarkable amount of success. I'm so intrigued to hear what you still aspire to do. Uh, maybe it's something you want to congratulate future you about. Maybe it's something on your bucket list. What I'd love to hear, what do you aspire to accomplish next? Oh, what I aspire to accomplish next in my life. Um, I, I, I would like to definitely finish my third book. Um, that's definitely on my radar. I, I know unequivocally that I've been pulled into um, building uh, another energy uh, opportunity and company uh, based on my knowledge um, and the things that I've learned. So I'm gravitating to that and scaling, like truly scaling. I was successful with a small team. So I think the scale part is the next journey for me. Um, you know, turning 50 this year. I think definitely, you know, my stretch between, you know, one to five years forward are going to be remarkable about, you know, what it's going to look like to scale and help others get into an industry like I have and be successful doing that and build, um, you know, a team around me. Because a lot of times, um, well, especially in the last little while, I've been, you know, kind of a lone wolf, if you want, and, um, it's been fun. It's been great, but I, but I definitely, uh, love being part of teams. I've been part of teams for a long time. So that's probably the next, uh, yeah, real big one is, is to really scale something, you know, larger than, uh, just myself. I love it. Okay. You have dropped some fantastic stories. Thank you so much for, for opening up about, you know, your journey. Uh, let's hit those rapid fire questions. Uh, and then, respectful of your time, happy to, to kind of wrap up, but I'm, I'm intrigued to hear your answers to these. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite sales tool? The phone. <laughs> of course, I love, that's good. It's precise. <laughs> um, given the number of roles that you had and the variety, uh, it's gotta be one of the most common ones between them. So that, I should have seen that one coming. I should have. <laughs> yeah. The phone for sure. Okay. Okay. What about movies? What's your favorite movie? I, I would say it still comes back to Braveheart. Um, just Ooh. something about that movie that, you know, really, I, I think, you know, can, can tug at that heart, you know, and, and, uh, and know you stand for something. Um, and I, and I believe that that demonstrated that for me. Man, I, I love the variety of answers we get to these. Uh, it is, I'm, my, my Netflix list is getting longer and longer. Uh, that is such a, I have not watched that movie in so long. Thank you. That is a, that is an under, uh, underappreciated movie. Uh, I, I do need to watch that again. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, last one. Uh, when you were a kid, if you think back to your earliest aspirations, what did you want to grow up to be? I wanted to own my own company for sure. Nice. I bet it feels. I didn't know what good to realize meant. that as a kid. I, I just knew that I wanted to own my own company. Yeah, for sure. Chris, this has been this has been such a wonderful conversation. Uh, thank you for sharing. I, I've seen so many of your successes and getting a chance to hear the journey a little bit more uh, was such a joy. Thank you for for opening up with us. Well, hey, thank you, uh, Joseph. I, I really appreciate you having me on the show, and you know, again. I want to thank the audience for uh, definitely listening in and anything I can help with. If people want to connect with me, you know, LinkedIn's a great place. I often, you know, have great messages uh, through the messenger there with people that, um, you know, are, are looking, you know, for some insight. So come check it, uh, check in with me and uh, I'd be happy to have a you know conversation there at LinkedIn for sure. Absolutely. And, and I appreciate so much that you, uh, you offered up the, the sharing of your, your LinkedIn profile, as well as your, your website there. Uh, I know you've been so generous of your time with so many from kind of a coaching and advising perspective. I'm sure many of our audience will reach out. So uh, thank you again for not just sharing your time today, but with so many others as well. 
Yeah, my pleasure. And thank you, Joseph. And if you come to my website, just for everybody listening in, um, my uh, the Success Playbook, my first book, uh, you can download a, a free copy there. So uh, by all means, uh, go check it out. Awesome. I'll be sure to include a link to that uh, right in the, the description of the podcast as well. Thank you. Awesome. I'm looking forward to our next conversation, Chris. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. You as well, Joseph. Thank you. Chat soon.